pings uh, in the rubble, rubble which of course was so difficult to get to. You can see when you see pictures of the outside of the building that it's a very precarious situation, that it is just really, really in chaos and of course just a construction nightmare. But they had been hearing pings first the day before, then yesterday, and now we're hearing that they have gotten the black boxes. They're in possession. The black boxes from the plane which had taken off from Dulles Airport and had ultimately been turned around and crashed into the Pentagon. John? All right, thank you very much. Bob Franken reporting live there. And now we want to share something with you uh, that will be shared around the world. It is three minutes of silence honoring the lives lost. Many of those not Americans, several Europeans were also killed in the attack on the World Trade Center. 31 countries were represented in the offices and businesses of the Twin Towers. People all over the world and in Europe are expressing their grief And we will share the three minutes of silence with you now as CNN takes you around the world on this day of mourning. From Dublin to Moscow, nations of Europe, nations around the world are marking this day along with the United States, marking their sorrow and their grief, grief that's felt here perhaps right. most powerfully, but shared by allies and by countries even that the United States doesn't really consider its friends. That's right. The NATO alliance has had asked for that three minutes of silence around the world as a show of solidarity with the Americans. Uh, as well as honoring the losses of several Europeans, thousands of Europeans, as well as people of Middle Eastern descent uh, who were lost in the uh, attack on the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center. We bring that to you from London's Heathrow Airport, Paris's Eiffel Tower. It is heartening indeed to see people around the world gather in such a moment. Sometimes we say that the whole world is watching, but this is one event that the whole world did watch, watched in horror and now grieves together. And we're glad to bring it to you. Let's take a moment now to bring you up to date on the investigation that's fueled by some of this sadness and fury. Early today, the U.S. Coast Guard boarded a Carnival Cruise Line ship off Miami, and they've detained two people who authorities say have, and we're quoting here, a history of hijacking. Well, they're not saying much more than that right now. And overseas in the Philippine capital of Manila, a raid on a hotel room by Philippine and American agents. They are reporting that they found bomb-making materials, or rather residue there, but so far they've not made any arrests. Also in New York, police have arrested, though, at least eight people. And law enforcement sources say they were carrying fake documentation. In fact, one 
had a phony pilot's license, he was arrested in the pilot's lounge. Let's go to uh, CNN's Garrick Utley for more on the latest on the rescue and the investigation out of New York City. Good morning again, Garrick. Yes, good morning, uh, Carol. As we look ahead uh, to this Friday in, in New York City in Manhattan, uh, President Bush, as he reported, uh, is coming to town this afternoon. Uh, he'll be, we assume he'll be visiting the uh, site of the terrorist attack there in Lower Manhattan and uh, attend a prayer service here before returning to Washington. We're looking now at Lower Manhattan, and as you can see, the, wor the weather has turned foul once again. Throughout the early morning hours, there have been a series of thunderstorms, electrical storms passing through, which has interrupted the rescue work. It's been stop, starts stop again. Uh, once the weather clears up, of course, it will uh, continue. But as we, as we look at what's happening in Manhattan, and has happened overnight, there's some very interesting scenes. That in Union Square, um, just above this part of lower Manhattan, there was a, an, a vigil last night. And uh, for New Yorkers, I think we're getting used to this. It's a familiar scene and yet a very important one, a mixture of American flags and candles there. But above all, it's not just the candles and the flags, it's the people coming together, spending time, not so much an official service as just being together and communing in this community in Union Square uh, in the heart of Manhattan. Time to be together, time to be alone, time to think and reflect and remember. And remembering is what Americans across the nation will be doing on this Friday. The president's called for a national day of prayer and remembrance at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. will be the, uh, held the principal service. Uh, the National Cathedral, of course, has been the site of so many uh, famous services over the years. Uh, president Bush will be in attendance and he's also asking Americans across the country to remember and to prayer and to offer their prayers. As far as New Yorkers are concerned, uh, they'll be getting a little bit more of their city back in Manhattan itself. That is to say that uh, much of the lower part of Manhattan, as you can see, from 14th Street there in the upper part of the map on your screen, uh, below 14th Street uh, down to the World Trade Center area to Battery Park at the tip of the island has been closed to traffic uh, since Tuesday's attack. Well, as of Friday, traffic can proceed all the way down to Canal Street, uh, which runs through Little Italy and Chinatown and Lower Manhattan, an improvement. Manhattanites will be getting a good uh, bit of their uh, lower part of the island back, and no doubt within an hour or two there will be traffic jams uh, there. As far as traffic jams are concerned, we're all waiting to see what President Bush's visit does here, usually a presidential visit to Manhattan, uh, snarls traffic all through the city. Uh, of course, the White House is going to try to avoid as much inconvenience as possible, but uh, New Yorkers are ready for that visit. Uh, I'm sure they're going to welcome the president, and they're also prepared for the traffic jams, which no doubt could be uh, severe. Anyway, back to you now, Carol and Jonathan. So much, Garrick, and uh, battling, uh, boy, battling traffic and battling the bad weather out there, as are you, Garrick. I know we had to bring you inside because of this storm, which uh, has slowed down some of the rescue operation. I think, Jonathan, you've got more on that. The rescue work has been affected. Also, in a smaller way, has our work. Alessio Vinci joins us now on the line. We haven't got a satellite connection because of that weather. Uh, what else is going on there, Alessio? Well, Jonathan, rain, 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 and more rain. I cannot imagine how uh, how all this water coming from the sky can make the work of those uh, rescue uh, workers there even more uh, difficult uh, and uh, and miserable. Uh, the chances, however, to find anybody uh, alive uh, uh, underneath uh, that rubble are growing dim. Uh, rescue workers, however, are telling us that they will continue, and they continue to hope that perhaps underneath that rubble some somebody somewhere underneath perhaps a, a big uh, chunk of uh, uh, concrete or an airtight void uh, is still alive. There are still more than 4,700 people missing underneath, uh, believed to be underneath that rubble, and certainly those rescue workers digging there, they must think, some of them, at least even one of them, should be, should be alive. There is also, of course, concern for the safety of the rescue workers themselves. Some of the buildings uh, nearby what was once the World Trade Center may have suffered some structural damage, and there is, of course, some concern about their stability. One of those buildings is the American Express building, and rescue workers used it uh, as a morgue and as a... Uh, uh, triage center. It was evacuated on Wednesday, and on Thursday, workers were pulled back from the area nearby. We understand also the officials are uh, keeping a close eye on it. More than 6,000 tons of debris have so far been removed uh, by exhausted and uh, determined rescue workers. Those debris taken to a uh, uh, to Staten Island, uh, where they have been they are being examined by the FBI, who is uh, searching uh, for some more clues, uh, which could perhaps reveal the identity of the uh, 
the rescue of the of the hijackers. Uh, perhaps the most frustrating part of this rescue operation, Jonathan, is the fact that uh, so far mostly what has been recovered from the site are body parts. The latest figures that were released last night speak for themselves. Speak for themselves. 184 sets of human remains um, have been found, and only the whole bodies, of which 35 have so far already been identified. The numbers, of course, will change. We know that authorities here have requested more than than, than 5,000 between 5 and 10,000 body bags, and certainly um, that we expect the number, the final number of victims of this tragedy uh, to rise to. Finally, just to give you a sense about how uh, you know strong and and, and 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 the magnitude of the disaster, one of the engineers uh, who was telling us that the site uh, there near the uh, where the World Trade uh, Towers were standing is like a living hell, Jonathan. A living hell and a nightmare that doesn't end. In addition to all of the other challenges that these rescue workers are facing, it has been three days. Uh, what about fatigue? How are they carrying on? Jonathan, uh, we're speaking about three days, but uh, I mean, we know that uh, this site will be a uh, uh, work in progress for the weeks and perhaps months to come. Uh, we are still in the very early days. Uh, early moments of this rescue operation to sift through that entire debris. Imagine two 110 stories buildings, uh, two planes cra all crashed into the same place. I mean, it, it must be an operation of, of incredible size. And of course, those rescue workers right now still very much determined in, 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 in the, with the hope that perhaps somewhere underneath that rubble there is somebody alive. Once one or two weeks will have passed, and uh, the chances of finding somebody alive then will be really, really, really small. Then perhaps the fatigue and, 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 the, and the hardship of this, of this operation will start to be felt a lot more. Uh, and another reminder, underneath that rubble, there are still believed to be 300 firefighters, 30 police officers. And, of course, these are some of the comrades, some of the colleagues of these people. And, of course, the fact that knowing that a friend and a colleague is underneath there is giving them another reason to search even harder and, and even with more determination, Jonathan. Alessio Vinci in New York, thanks very much. It's a story in a way of a superhuman effort, but there are so many stories of missing people, of last minute phone calls, of concerns and fears. It is raining now once again in New York. The work just gets harder and harder, and the people who are watching these images along with us have one more worry, one more concern. The rescue work will likely only be slowed and make, made rather even more difficult. CNN's Larry King spoke with some of those who've been affected by these events. I actually spoke to Mark the day before the incident. I did not hear from him the morning of the tragedy. I found that out when I called my daughter-in-law just casually and she was screaming and she said a friend just told her that something went into the World Trade Center right near Mark's office and uh, I started to cry and I turned on the TV and I just couldn't imagine such a tragedy happening and when I saw where it hit and I knew where his office was located immediately I, I just I just lost it and I uh, really didn't sleep and then the next day we've been in the city and we've been in the city today checking lists going from place to place uh, just just doing whatever we can to find out if anyone knows of his whereabouts or who spoke to him in his last moments and even just to meet somebody, to speak to anyone who's going through the same yeah. experience as we are in uh, that new mark in Cantor Fitzgerald. He called me at 9 o'clock and told me that the building next door to him just exploded and it was on. And I said, what do you mean exploded? And he said, flames are coming out, people are on the roof, I got to go. And he slammed, hung up and that was the last I heard from him. He said, uh, Shelley, I think the uh, building just got hit by a plane or a bomb or something like that. and then, uh, I'm going to, I have to get out of here. I have to leave as soon as I can. Those stories are told time and time again. And New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, well, he said it plainly yesterday. Nearly 5,000 people are unaccounted for. Each with loved ones and families are going to national armories now with dental records and photographs, homemade flyers. CNN's Maria Hinojosa has a look at their stories. Just seven weeks ago, Anne McGovern posed with her new grandson minutes after he was born. I've never seen her look so happy as when he was born. She was there. Um, she was 